Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben, and you're watching Expressive Photography. In last week's video, we had a look at the forest environment and why many people struggle with it, uh, the difficulties it presents, us, uh, presents us with, and how we can overcome some of those difficulties by having a better attitude, by simplifying, by cropping, by photographing what is there rather than what we hope was there, um, and just generally chilling out and having a better time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> landscape photography is a lot more simple than perhaps we uh, allow it to be, and we make it kind of difficult for ourselves by having a whole bunch of expectations and uh, maybe negative attitudes towards certain things. In this video, I want to pick up where we left off in my Lightroom catalog with uh, some of the photographs that I took on the recent Canary Islands trip. And we're going to do a little bit of processing. Um, and just as a kind of announcement before that, it's worth saying that I haven't processed any of these images yet. They've been sat in my hard drive for a few weeks since we got back. I have barely looked at them. Um, and when it comes to processing images and making videos about processing images, I haven't done any work to any of these files in advance. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm going to teach. So we're going to strap in and go for a bit of a ride through this Lightroom catalog. One of the really important things with processing is to allow the images to ask. I, I think it's such a fundamental part of processing. When we're in the landscape, we point our cameras at things that ask us to point our cameras at them. There's something about them, the arrangement, the composition, the attributes of the landscape, and the same thing exists in Lightroom here. We are scrolling through and looking for something that catches our eye. And when we double click on it, it starts to, you know, either confirm our suspicion or no, maybe that's a bit too busy for who I am right now. I think this is a really important part is to process the image that asks and that somehow resonates with us now. I, you know, it's the middle of an afternoon on a Friday. I've been working all day. I've been sat at my computer. You know, I'm, I'm feeling a bit tired. I'm thinking about going out for a run, <laughs> which will hopefully cure me from my tiredness, ironically. So I'm looking for images that are going to help me with where I am now and how can I articulate something and how can I say something about it. So funnily enough, this is one of the photos that I picked up on last time. I, I just kind of liked it and I've already flipped it uh, from the orientation that it was in when I took the image. Um, so let's just cover a couple of the, the technical side of things. Uh, these were all taken, like I said, last week at two and a half thousand ISO, but because they're reasonably well exposed, there's not an awful lot of noise in these files. The new uh, detail uh, denoise AI in Lightroom does an incredible job of getting rid of any noise. And if there was a lot of visible noise in this, then I might consider doing so, but it's not. So I'm just not going to bother. Handheld at 1 over 200th of a second, f5.6. Now everything was a reasonable distance away. This is 85 millimeters, so everything was quite a long way away. So I don't have any massive depth of field issues. But there is something about this image that I kind of like. And the shallower depth of field has actually helped to kind of diffuse that background a little bit. So this is the raw file straight out of the camera. And I have increased the whites um, last week just to kind of add to some of that luminosity. Now we can see up here, we do have a little bit of clipping in those highlights, but they are so minor that it's barely worth dealing with, but I will just drop them to get rid of that. Now my attitude towards processing has always been feel. You know, processing an image by feel to create a feel in myself, you know, how I feel now, how I feel about the content, and equally how that is going to resonate as it gets shared with somebody else. 
Color is a very, very powerful tool for us to manipulate uh, how something is going to be perceived. And what I'm going to do with this is just look at what happens if I start to cool things down a little bit. Now, that was a very minor adjustment, but I've cooled down the fog. And what it's done is it's changed the feel of the forest scene. It feels a little bit more threatening now than it did before. And I think that's a good thing. Um, and I actually like this kind of atmospheric left hand side with the way the branches are leaning over and the diffused atmosphere. Uh, but the right hand side, there feels to be quite a lot of contrast in that right hand side there. And I just wonder how much of that I actually need. So I'm just going to lift the blacks a little bit and open the shadows a little bit. I just open the blacks a little bit more. And what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a bit more of an equilibrium between the right hand side and the left hand side. I have never processed images as uh, a linear process. It's not like I'm going to start with one thing and then do something else and then do something else. I think it's worth going through the process here of understanding what repetitive processing would do. First of all, we need to understand what was it that attracted me to the scene in the first place. It's this glowing tunnel of atmospheric luminosity. There's a little bit of light filtering down from the top, but most of the scene is this geometric leaning of the trees over the road and quite a mysterious atmosphere. I had cropped it into a 65 by 24 in camera I might be worth just quickly checking to see what a 16 by 9 would do. And what that really does is gives us more of the same. And I think I prefer it. I, I, I think there's enough interest up here in those branches leaning over the top that have actually added to the scene. But equally, I think both of those compositions would work. I think the 65 by 24 that I shot in camera feels uh, very interesting. The, the issue we're going to have up here is maybe the luminosity, but I think I can address that maybe just with a simple gradient. And I think I'll just pull down from the top of the frame there and I'll make it nice and big, actually, and then push it out. And that will give me a diffused... Uh, gradient down from the top of the frame and I'm just going to pull the highlights down a little bit and maybe take a touch off the whites and what that does is contain the top. Luminosity is such a powerful trigger it really demands our attention and if this stuff up here is too bright or this stuff over on the left is too bright and I think I need another little linear gradient in there just to contain that side and every time we burn which is darken or subdue something the impact of that is it becomes less obvious luminosity is such a powerful trigger so what i think i can do here is um, maybe with a simple radio gradient and one of the things you'll really notice with my processing is I use simple techniques most of the time. I want to use the easiest method possible to achieve what I want to achieve. Yes, I could drag this image into light into Photoshop and do it all with luminosity masks and all sorts of more complex techniques or dodging and burning with the history brush, but I can do it right here in Lightroom, so why bother? Um, and I'm going to increase the luminosity of that tunnel a little bit. And then I do want to look at the temperature. Uh, definitely don't want it too warm. Now you can see if I go onto the blue side it instantly feels too blue and if I go to the warm side it instantly feels too warm. So this is a, a very precise juggling act to find the temperature of the tunnel of fog. Uh, and I think I'm happy with that which is it's hard to say whether it's neutral or whether it's slightly warm. It's, it's a little bit difficult to say. Now, once I've, one of the things I approach processing by doing is I tend to eliminate 
um, distractions. It's one of the ways I process is to just let's let's cut this image down to its core content and process it in a way that just feels more harmonious to me. So by eliminating some of those brighter distractions and then changing the the, the luminosity of the tunnel there, I'm starting to zone in on uh, different ways of processing this image. Now, as I'm looking at it now, I'm looking at the left-hand side here and thinking, hmm, maybe there's too much of that. And what I might actually be able to do is eliminate even more of this content. Maybe it's going to be a horizontal four by five. Now, like I said to you at the beginning of this, I haven't processed this in advance. So this is me genuinely looking at the file for the first time and coming up with, now I kind of like that at the moment. I kind of like that. Now it feels quite contained. This branch is maybe a, a little bit obtrusive. Um, so I'll come in and again with a brush, I think I'm just going to brush down here and open up the blacks a little and open up the shadows a little. And what that does instantly is just make that less obvious, less dark, less demanding on the eye. So now we're in this position, I can start looking at the global feel of the scene. Now, obviously, as soon as I um, crop this from what was a 65 by 24, then into a 16 by 9, now into a horizontal 4 by 5, I'm allowing the content to determine the aspect ratio. The 65 by 24 in the field was exciting because it was making expansiveness in a contained environment. And that panoramic aspect ratio, that expansive aspect ratio, is always going to make you feel as if you're in a huge space, a really dynamically large space. The 16 by 9 um, includes more content and therefore can feel busier, but I felt that there was more stuff in the frame than perhaps was necessary. So what I've done now is I've allowed the content, the stuff, you know, the, the way the left hand side now interacts with the frame edge, the way the right hand side now interacts with the frame edge, I now feel that the content is determining the aspect ratio. And I think this is a really, really cool way to approach processing. Now, there's a little corner up here that I am going to end up warping out of this scene. I don't want to clone it and I don't want to do anything too dramatic to it in Lightroom. We'll take it into Photoshop and we'll finish it off there. But I'm now at a stage where I can start to say, OK, let's determine the feel of this photograph. Now, the darker we make scenes, the more mysterious they get, the more graphical the content is going to feel. The more open it is, then it's going to feel more airy. So if I just grab the shadow slider and open that up a little bit, the forest opens up. It reveals itself. We can see more. It feels more geometric. It feels more atmospheric. We're lifting the midtones. We're showing more of that atmosphere. And I think I'm going to grab another little gradient here because I want the bottom of the frame to feel a little bit more open than perhaps some of this heavier canopy stuff. So that feels OK. And the next thing I'm just going to play around with here is the temperature. So I'm going to warm this. I'm going to so let's make an energizing image. So I'm going to take it out the cool slightly into the warmer side. I'm going to use the green slider, uh, the tint slider. You can see if we're in the magenta side, that looks kind of cool. So that's now magenta is always going to make it sort of a little bit more luxurious. The green is going to make it feel a little bit more austere. It was already pretty green, so moving it into the magenta is going to negate some of that greenness. I think we're going to end up work, working one image today and then maybe doing another one next week. I'm now going to come into the hue. I quite like these greens and I think there's an opportunity to maybe make them 
a little bit more yellow. There's quite a, you can see how much, if obviously if we move the hue slider too far across, they start to get quite warm, almost brownish. But the combination of those tones, and we're starting to bring out some of the richness in these, the moss on the branches, and, and I think that's really nice. So I'm liking the feel of this. It's got a kind of warm, uh, slightly incongruous tone to it. Um, I'm gonna boost, boost the saturation just a tiny touch, just to make it feel, obviously saturation is like an intensity slider. It's a way to up something. It's like a volume control on a mixing desk as we're, we're moving the sliders around on a 48 track mixing desk we're bringing up an element to make it feel slightly different. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to color grade the shadows. So the way to color grade in Lightroom is to pull out the saturation. That's what we're doing here is we're moving it into the saturated slide. And then we can rotate the, um, the wheel to take us to the tone that we're looking for. So I want something that's See, this is getting into cyan, which is disgusting. I definitely want to come around into the blues, but I don't want to get into purple, although it's not horrendous. So I just want to be just into the blues. And once I've chosen a tone, we obviously have to dial the saturation. If I take it straight into the middle, there is no toning. And I just want to add this tiny little touch of coolness to those shadows. And what that's doing is creating color contrast. We can dodge and burn with any attributes, uh, particularly in Adobe Lightroom. We can uh, dodge and burn, of course, with brightness, but we can dodge and burn with saturation. We can dodge and burn with color. We can dodge and burn with temperature. We can dodge and burn with contrast. There's all sorts of different ways of dodging and burning. And the whole scene now feels like it needs a touch more clarity just so we feel like we're in a forest environment. I think the blacks have got two open here and I want to just pull those back over to the right a little, just to bring some of that contrast back into the scene. Everything was just getting a little bit too open for my liking, um, which I kind of like, but it's only a tiny touch we need just in there. So if we have a look at that full screen now, we've come an insanely long way from that original 65 by 24 aspect ratio that I thought at the time looked pretty damn good straight out of the camera. But we have listened to the content. We've allowed it to guide us in terms of some of the compositional or aspect ratio decisions that have been made. But yet at the same time, my uh, preference of tone and hue and saturation is also being allowed to play out. There's some quite interesting things going on in this photograph and, and I'm really quite keen on it. I'm just going to open this image in Photoshop, which will just take a moment because Photoshop isn't open on my computer at the moment. And what that's going to allow us to do is to make a few little adjustments that need made. Pull it onto the right monitor. So this top left corner, uh, the top right corner there, I am not so happy with. So I'm just gonna do a straight Command A uh, to select uh, the entire scene and then Command T, which is exactly the same if I just um, escape from that. If it's the same as going select all and then image transform and I am going to warp so any way you want to do that is fine by me. And then I'm just gonna pull out that area there and you'll see how I'm positioning something in the corner that feels as if it is a nice resolution to that scene. And I'm quite happy with that. Some people are gonna say, oh, well, that's uh, manipulating images beyond you know the way they should be done. and you know, images are manipulated by wide angled lenses all the time. I am going to come in here with the cloning tool, uh, the smart uh, 
correction or whatever the thing is called um, smart spot healing brush tool and I there's a lot going on in this frame and I just want to take away some of the more obvious points of luminosity that may be just catching my eye so in there now this tool in Photoshop now is incredible you know it, it's so smart and um, by kind of modeling what's around it and so forth and just getting rid of a few of those little brighter little patches you know things that I feel are kind of attracting my attention like that little bright spot there and that cloning job has definitely helped to make the image feel as if it's contained within the frame. Now we have an atmospheric image, we have an image that's been toned by our preference, you know we've moved the hue slider around, we've changed the tones of some of the greener um, foliage down in the bottom right and we've made it a little bit warmer, a little bit more yellow and a little bit more saturated. A filter I use quite a bit is the Nick Color FX and I tend to use Glamour Glow in conjunction with um, Tonal Contrast and what that's going to allow people have been using Orton effects in forest photography for a long time and the fact that atmosphere already exists in this image gives us a very nice little platform to enhance that feeling of atmosphere and to make some very nice tonal adjustments. Now I have a bunch of presets, one of which is called Expressive Glow and it is a, a combination of the Glamour Glow effect I'm going to adjust the the mask so I'm going to allow it to uh, deal with all of the shadows and we can actually be quite aggressive with that glow here because it's going to lend itself to the mysterious atmospheric qualities of the scene and then I'm just going to play around with the temperature so I'm just going to examine what happens if I cool this down so this is going to predominantly uh, hit the shadows so by making the shadows cooler we're adding to that effect that I started with the um, the split toning or the color grading um, I will take a good chunk of it off the highlights and I'm kind of happy with that it looks kind of cool one of the uh, side effects of using glamour glow is it tends to soften shadows and this is where bringing a little bit of uh, contrast back into the shadows uh, in particular is a really nice way of just adding a little bit of crunch back into the scene so I'm kind of happy with that looks pretty good so we've made quite a dramatic shift so that was it without and that is it with and what I might find with this one is I just want to reduce the opacity a little bit that's the great thing with using a layer uh, to do this in in Photoshop is just being able to dial the, the opacity back and what I've done is I've used 65% of the effect that I had. I am never a man to keep a layer when I can discard it so I'm just going to flatten the image, hit command S, save it back into uh, Lightroom and then we can come back into Adobe Lightroom, hit the F key and there is our final photograph. Like I said a few moments ago we've come an awful long way from that original 16, uh, 65 by 24 aspect ratio that I took in the field. Uh, it might be an idea just to reset the raw file and that's, uh, that's that. I'll go back into the aspect ratio that I took in camera and then I'll hit the J key and we can open those side by side and turn the lights off. So the image on the left was the one that was taken in camera and is basically the unprocessed raw file and I think it has some beautiful attributes on its own. It could have been left as it was and it would still be a very very fine photograph. 
the process that I've gone through to create the one on the right hand side is clearly a very, very different representation of the scene. Um, but all we're dealing with here is luminosity, contrast, color, geometry and atmosphere. I'm very happy with that and I think it really is quite expressive. I know I've wandered off in various directions here and I've talked about a whole bunch of different things. Like I said at the start of the video, I had no plan, I had no uh, direction that I was aiming in. I didn't even know what image I was going to process. So the fact that we've managed to get here while I've been simultaneously talking to you, I'm actually quite content with that, to be honest. This is an image I really quite like. Um, I think it really sums up the place and I think it really sums up the atmosphere of the place. And I believe that I've had enough input of my own in terms of the processing, the aspect ratio, how the whole thing feels, the geometry of the relationship between the content and the frame. I'm happy with this. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this whole process, whether it's been of value to you. If you would like more of this type of content, it would be a pleasure for me to sit and process more of these images. And in fact, for next week's video, I can imagine we'll be jumping back on and maybe processing another one of these files live, uh, just so you can see if we can go off in a completely different direction. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're not already doing so. Jump into the comments, like I said. And of course, I appreciate everyone who takes time to watch and comment on these videos. Uh, that's it for now. See you again next week. I hope you're well wherever you are and you enjoy expressive photography. Bye for now.